This week on Brian Ross Investigates, The Spies Among Us, three American traitors, the FBI's Robert Hansen and the CIA's Aldrich Ames and Edward Lee Howard are in prison for life after being caught spying for Russia. But tonight, new allegations from former CIA officer Robert Baer that there was a fourth man working for Russia who so far has not been caught. It was a matter of deduction that they came up with this guy's name. The CIA is not talking, but Baer says there's an active investigation of a now-retired top CIA official, Paul Redmond. There's only one law. There's always going to be spies. Redmond strongly deny he's ever been a spy for Russia, and former colleagues back him up. Is Paul Redmond the fourth man? No, absolutely not. There's no evidence of that whatsoever. But the evidence is overwhelming that Moscow has had a steady stream of top security secrets from American spies, leading to the deaths of dozens of Russians who were working for the U.S. So how do you put a dollar value on that? You know, all these lives that were lost. I don't think you can. Plus, this week's winners and losers in the media. See if you agree with the choices made by the editors of Mediaite. From the studios of the Law and Crime Trial Network in New York City's Herald Square, this is Brian Ross Investigates. Good evening, and thank you for joining us, and welcome to our friends on Facebook Live. I'm Brian Ross, joined as always by my colleague Rhonda Schwartz. And Rhonda, we begin tonight with a real-life spy thriller. Amid concerns, there's been a Russian mole inside the CIA or the FBI who is yet to be caught, the so-called fourth man, Rhonda. That's right, Brian. Three men are behind bars for working for the Russians. The FBI's Robert Hansen and the CIA's Aldrich Ames and Edward Lee Howard. But tonight, you're going to hear about a growing consensus that there was a fourth man, or woman, who has provided Russia with some of America's most closely held national security secrets. And we're joined now by Robert Baer, a former CIA intelligence officer and the author of the new book, The Fourth Man. Mr. Bear, a legendary CIA spy whose exploits have been recorded in books and in the film, for instance, Syriana, where George Clooney plays Bob Bear. Bob, a former colleague of mine, thank you so much for being here. In your book, you document the investigation into trying to find the fourth man, and you actually suggest there is one prime suspect who came under investigation. What made him a suspect in this case? According to the investigators, and I only use firsthand sources for this book, only firsthand sources, um, he fit a profile of compromises to Moscow that Ames couldn't account for and Hansen couldn't account for. Uh, they decided he was somebody who had been assigned to Langley for 10 years, starting on Russia desk and then moving over to counterintelligence. It was a matter of deduction that they came up with this guy's name. There's only one law. There's always going to be spies. This is the man identified in the book as under suspicion, Paul Redmond, a now retired CIA senior official who was actually credited with tracking down Ulrich Ames, the Russian spy inside the CIA. Ames would not have been caught without Paul Redmond. And as far as I'm concerned, Paul Redmond was the individual who was chiefly responsible. At an intelligence community seminar after Ames was caught, Redmond even suggested there might be a fourth man. My only point here is I hope that this will not be just viewed as a quick fix and then we'll go on to other things. This case exposes all sorts of weaknesses clearly in the Bureau and elsewhere in our government and certainly deserves a very close look and investigation to see really what's wrong so we can take sensible steps. The mole was the person looking for the mole. If he took credit for finding Aldrich James, tracking him down. He tracked down Alder James, Nicholson. Uh, he also found out that there was an FBI agent who turned out to be Bob Hansen. And he's a legend at the CIA. So why would he be a mole if he's doing all this work to find Russian spies inside American intelligence? Well, I never said he's mole. I just said the Russians, as they described it, it's called the queen's sacrifice, is you give up lesser moles to protect your most important one. So like a chessboard move. Now, he actually talked to you. I assume he denied it? Oh, he absolutely denied it. He said, listen, we're, we're friendly. And he invited me to come stay with him. He says, 
Bobby, you know, I don't know why the FBI has been after me for 25 years. I don't know what they think they have. Um, I have no opinion about this internal CIA investigation. Well, did you come away from that, Bob, thinking it couldn't be him? Look, intuition tells me it's not him. Um, the FBI told me I only have a quarter of the evidence against him. I haven't seen the original evidence. And if I were on a jury, I wouldn't convict. As best you know, there is still an active investigation into this fourth man, into this individual. I know there's an investigation because the FBI is going around knocking on the doors of my sources as of a month ago in a very friendly way. I don't think it's a leak investigation saying, what did we miss here? How can you help us? Uh, and the rest of it. And, you know, if, you know, this has been, this is a, this is a very active investigation and it's not because the FBI doesn't know what it's doing. It's just, they cannot get a smoking gun on the guy they're after or somebody else. You also make the point in your book that this fourth man, whoever it is, really blinded uh, the CIA and American intelligence into what was happening in Russia at a pivotal point in time. By 1998, the CIA did not have a single source in Moscow. Neither did the State Department, a reliable source, because the fourth man betrayed them all to the KGB. Uh, I checked this every way to Sunday. Uh, with Clinton's National Security Council staff, the National Intelligence Officer, even the ambassador told me, look, by 1988, 1999, I got better information from Moscow taxi drivers <laughs> than I did the CIA. He's on the record about that. And so given that, the United States was blinded as to the ambitions of Vladimir Putin. Putin came to power thanks to a very quiet, statist KGB coup d'etat. And we missed it in the 90s because all of our KGB assets, agents, had all been compromised. And so, in effect, Putin was a slow rolling Pearl Harbor. And so, the, whoever this fourth man is, along with Aldra James and Bob Hansen, uh, did incredible damage to the United States. Incredible damage if you draw a direct connection between our ignorance of what Putin was up to, who he was, and the war in Ukraine. We are closer to World War III than we've ever been. And in a way, this came as a huge surprise to us. You submitted your manuscript for this book to the CIA. Uh, did they uh, want you to not report certain things? What do they want you to take out? They took out all sorts of stuff, like um, there, was an, there was a spy in MI6 that Redmond found, and a guy named Spedding who had MI6. They did that, details about that things small in here. I sent the manuscript both to the FBI and the CIA. I said, look, this is a current investigation. I know it, no matter what you say. If this impedes your investigation, I won't publish. Uh, no one wanted to take that on. I made the CIA changes. It was submitted. There are no sources and methods in this book compromised. It's based on reinterpretation of public information and a couple small additions here and there. And so how was this book received by the uh, seventh floor, as they call it, the uh, headquarters floor? Well, let's put it this way. I've been canceled. <laughs> <laughs> There's no surprise, is it, Brian? Not at all. Not at all. Robert Baer, former uh, CIA spy, now great author. Thank you so much for being with us here tonight. Thanks. Paul Redmond declined to appear on our program tonight, but in a statement to us, he said, Robert Baer's book is hogwash filled with mistakes and misinformation. I have never, ever been a Russian spy, Rhonda. And we also heard from one of Redmond's longtime colleagues who said he wanted to come on tonight and defend the retired CIA senior official. And we're joined now by David Major, who for more than two decades worked foreign counterintelligence at the FBI. David is a legendary figure in the American intelligence community. Mr. Major, thank you so much for being with here tonight. Thank you for your kind comments. That's true. Let me start by asking you, is Paul Redmond the fourth man? No, absolutely not. There's no evidence of that whatsoever. First of all, there is evidence that there's something else. We don't even know it's a man. We know that. We know that's for sure. But if you look at the cases during that time, I, I worked all that period. I know all those players. I worked all those cases. I was intimately involved in it. So I really know this. 
And I teach this. Does it make sense that he could be a suspect? Absolutely. But is there evidence that he's a spy? None whatsoever. And, and saying someone in our business is a spy is a really, really important thing not to do if there's no evidence. Right. In Bob Bear's book, he describes a meeting at the CIA where they essentially are going through the matrix of who it must be, narrowing it down to, it looks like Paul Redmond, and he stormed out of the room. Well, that would be Paul Redmond's personality, to be honest with you, that he would storm out of the room, but not because I think he was a spy. And that, that, first of all, that doesn't prove he's a spy. The fact that he was, so what are you guys talking about? I mean, I've been here, you know, I spent my whole life to do this, and now you're saying it's me, and I'm in the room with you, and I can see why he was thrown out of the room, but that doesn't prove he's a spy. That's simply how he emotionally responded to someone making that accusation. Remember, this guy spent his entire life in counterintelligence looking for the spy, and so for to say he is, and then, you know, that would be a pretty serious thing for him, and so the fact that he storms out doesn't prove anything. How hurtful has this been to uh, Paul Redmond to have this uh, raised now in this new book? I think very hurt, hurtful because in this business, our trust uh, uh, is very important. In fact, when you work in the business and you know these people, you have to trust each other. And Paul was one of those people that you trusted. He's an interesting personality. You know, he's, he's very volatile, he's a very strong opinion. That doesn't make him a spy. It simply makes him a strong personality, which I think you need in this business. In his statement to us, he uh, denied it very strongly. Have you asked him directly, Paul, were you a Russian spy? Yes. And? No, not at all, not even close. But bottom line, Mr. Major, you would say there are some events that are not explained by the uh, treachery of Aldrich James or Robert Hansen or the FBI. There's somebody else out there, you think, who has been spying for uh, Russia inside the FBI or the CIA? Yes. And do I believe there's somebody else? Absolutely. Do I believe it's a man? I don't know it's a man. Could be a woman, as I said. Could be multiple people. Do you think we'll ever know who this fourth man or this fourth woman is? If we live long enough. One of the things I love about living is that if you live long enough, you'll probably always find the, right, the rest of the story. Because eventually it comes out somehow, someplace, sometime, somebody who knows the answer will come out. Now, it may not be in your my lifetime, but I believe we will find out. But I don't believe we'll find out that it's Paul Redmond. David Major, thank you so much for being with us here tonight. My pleasure. When we come back, what makes an American intelligence officer turn on his country? A new look at the former FBI agent who wanted to be like James Bond. You're watching Brian Ross Investigates on the Law and Crime Trial Network.